Hello fellow teachers, today I'm going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step tutorial of how I create an interactive revision lesson. You can also use this to create interactive quizzes for your students. I've also provided a free template of the lesson that I've used in the description box below. So once you're done creating your interactive quiz, it will look something like this. As you can see on the slide, we have a question and several options. Um, you, you can add as many options as you'd like. I, li I wanted to limit it to just three. One of these options is going to be the correct option and it will lead them or it will lead the students to a slide that says that this is the correct option and then the others will be the incorrect options. Um, I chose to add a hint or an extra explanation on that slide so that students can kind of um, be reminded of concepts that will help them uh, hopefully reach the correct answer. Once they are done answering the first question and they got it right, then they will go to the next question, as you can see, question two, and so on and so forth. Now you can add as many questions as you would like to this interactive quiz, and um, to be honest, it will take a bit just to set up the first few slides, but once you have the first few slides or kind of like the templates set up, then you can um, have as many questions as you can and you can establish this by simply duplicating the pre-existing template slides. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the template that I've created um, and also explain how you can add more questions to it. If you'll notice that the template that I've created only goes up to three questions, all right? And let's say that your interactive review session or your interactive quiz, you want it to have more questions. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can actually add to this and how you can create these slides or this type of presentation from scratch. The first thing you want to do is you want to create essentially three template slides. The first slide um, the first template slide is going to include your question the options and a button that leads to the next question all right um, you're also going to include a correct slide the slide that pertains to when the students select the correct answer and finally an incorrect slide the slide that pertains to when students choose the incorrect option on each of these slides you also want to include a prompt that takes them back to the original question all right so on both the correct and incorrect slides now you'll notice that these first three slides um, it says that they are template slides meaning they don't uh, contain any links on them so let's assume that i know that my um, interactive quiz is going to need more than three questions i need to add um, at least five extra questions so what you will do is depending on how many extra questions you want to add all you have to do is select the three template slides right click and duplicate as many times as you want in terms of questions so for five extra questions i will go ahead and duplicate this five extra times what this will do is it will create duplicates of slides that do not contain any links on them so that you can go ahead and link them correctly. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that next. So I will begin with the first slide and let's assume that this is question number one, all right? And I've decided to include three options. If you'd like to add more options, all you have to do is make duplicates of your wrong options. So you can have more wrong options basically. So up to as many as you would like but I'm just gonna keep it at three for now and what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be either clicking on the box or the words um, it really doesn't matter it's, it's a personal preference I like to have it on the box I like to add the link on the box because then when it's in present mode it looks more fancy so once you click on the box or the text you're gonna right click and you're gonna choose this option the link Another way you can do this is you can go up here, insert, link. So both will do, oops, insert, link. Both will do the same thing. Now, since this um, box should lead the students to the wrong option slide, and our incorrect or wrong option slide is slide number six, we're going to go ahead and link this to slide number six apply 
Let's test it out. This way, when students click on the wrong option, it will take them to the correct slide. And as you can see here, I would add hints that pertain to question number one. Okay, so here I would add the hints pertaining to question number one. Oh, I'm a bad speller. <laughs> um, so then we're gonna go back to the question slide and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna link, uh, but this time you're gonna link the right option to the, to the correct option slide. So again, link. And we'll notice that the correct option slide is slide number five. So I'm gonna go ahead and select slide number five from these options and click apply. All right. Um, a fast uh, or a trick to, uh, instead of relinking the wrong option um, button here to the incorrect answer slide, uh, that would be kind of redundant and a waste of time. So instead, all I have to do is take this wrong option, co uh, copy it, duplicate it, and make as many copies as I want for it. And that's because all of these wrong option buttons should lead to the same slide. So it really doesn't matter. We don't have to keep relinking this. Um, the last thing we want to link is where we see this button right here where it says next question. I need to link this to the next question. So the next question happens to be slide number seven. So this would be question number two and I already created a copy. Um, this came from the template that uh, we had at the beginning and essentially this button should link to question number two. So in order for us to do that, we will do the exact same thing. We're gonna go ahead, right click, link, and I'm gonna select slide seven because that is where question number two is found. Um, keep in mind that you wanna shuffle these, okay? So you don't want the right answer to always be the first one. You wanna shuffle them around for question number two, for example, all right? They're still gonna link to the same slides because you didn't really change the linking option. You just changed where they are so that the students don't catch on to the fact that the right answer is always the first option. So once we have all the links added on question on the question number one slide, we're gonna go ahead to the correct answer slide and we're going to link this back to question number one. We wanna do that on this slide and the incorrect answer slide. So why do you wanna do this? Once a student has answered question number one, they got the correct answer. You want them to go back to the slide so that they can click on this option and they can go to the next question. If they got the wrong answer, you still want them to go back to the original question so that they have a chance to try again to practice. Um, so for both of these, on, on both of these slides, I'm going to link this back to question number one slide, which is slide number four, according to our, um, according to this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click just like before. Okay. And if it doesn't show uh, for some reason, it's not showing for me here. So I'm just going to do this insert link. It's the same thing. And I'm going to link it to slide number four apply. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the incorrect answer slide. I, again, I'm not seeing it there for some reason, but it's okay. We have it here and slide number four. Okay, let's test this out. So we're gonna go back to question number one slide and go on present mode, and we're going to test it out. So wrong option takes us here, back to question, back to question number one. If we choose the right option, it will take us to the correct slide, back to question one, that just happened, and then this should take us to question number two which is what happens, all right? And so on and so forth. And you would just, you'll just follow the exact same, um, I guess, format or trend. The more you add slides, making sure that they all link to the correct um, location. And you can always test that by going into present mode and, and testing out your, um, your links. Um, the last thing I wanna mention is, and I've already done that uh, for you in the slot in the template, but just in case you wanna do this yourself, make sure that the last slide that you create um, basically has, instead of having the next question option, you would just indicate to the students that this is your last question, you may exit the presentation at this point. Now, 
this type of um, this type of interactive uh, quiz obviously like when I do it I don't really count it for grades because I mean the students have the answers so it's not really for assessment purposes I do this mainly for practice purposes it's a great way for students to practice um, information to kind of test their own selves to take autonomy in terms of their own learning and because of it's because it's interactive they they enjoy um, doing it it's it's to me I find it more engaging than just giving them a question packet and then an answer key you know two documents and um, although I know they're both serving the same purposes I just feel like this is a lot more engaging it's almost like a game um, and they can kind of go through it and you can rearrange this and customize it as you please as you wish you can add to it you can um, add more options um, really it's it has endless opportunities in terms of how you can play with this if you have any questions please do let me know in the comments and I will be more than happy to try to help you out and once again, this um, template is present in the description box. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. Have a great day.